And now, Mystery Theater. Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. For 75 years, from the late 18th to the middle of the 19th century, was the heyday of the writers of the Gothic story. Here is one of the most popular, which the great composer von Weber used as the libretto of the opera Der Freischutz. And appropriately enough, it begins in a graveyard. William, don't let that gun touch my headstone. Sorry, Mother. You have much to be sorry for. I could not help it, Mother. I love her. I must. You broke your sacred oath, sworn on my deathbed. You will have cause to regret it. But more so the bride who will never be yours. Our mystery drama, The Fatal Marksman, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Michael Wager and Suzanne Grossman. in the Duchy of Graustenland would have argued that Catherine Adam, daughter of the Forester of Linden, was the loveliest bride in West Germany, and that Robert Stock, the hunter, was a lucky man to be getting her for his bride. No one except Catherine and her mother, that is. For Catherine was very much in love with William Brager, a young bailiff's clerk. But kind as her father, Bertram Adam, was... On the subject of his daughter's marriage, he was inflexible. Now listen, Elsa, once and for all. Drive this notion out of your head, root and branch. But, Bertram, why shouldn't our Catherine live just as happily with a bailiff's clerk as with a hunter? Elsa, for better than 200 years, this farm in the forest of Linden has come down from father to son in my family. If I had a son... Ah, Kate could marry whom she will. It's my fault that I wasn't able to give you a son. I wouldn't change her for any son in the world. No more than I would change you for anything in the world. Nor I you, Bert. We've had wonderful years together. And I could only wish the same for Kate. That's why I argue so hard for William. He's such a good, kind-hearted boy. Kind-hearted, maybe. But not a hunter. And if anything happens to me, unless there is a son, a hunter in my family, to replace me, there goes our tenancy. And you are left with nowhere to live. But William and Kate would take me in with them. Take you in with them? Where? Where could they afford to live on a bailiff clerk's salary? He won't be a bailiff's clerk forever. Uh, long enough for all we know. Not William. Oh, no. He has a good head on his shoulders. And when he gets to be a bailiff, oh, what a step up in life for our daughter. No, wife. Kate will marry Robert. But she doesn't like Robert. All right. All right. It's not altogether Robert I care about myself. So, Robert or no Robert, you tell Kate. It must be a lad of the forest. <laughs> I know she put you up to this. Ah, two o'clock. Well, late enough for dinner today. I'd best back to my preserves. Shh, Kate, you can come out now. Well, did you hear? Enough to know he won't agree. He has his reasons. He's just a stubborn old man and I'll never forgive him. I've run away. Oh, hush now. You don't mean anything you're saying. I do. 
I do. I'll never marry anyone. I'll take the vows. I'll... Come now, Kate. Stop making a scene. It's William or no one. Oh, you're as stubborn as your father. What am I going to do? Oh, who could that be? Uh, go see like a good girl. Yes, Mother. William! Kate. I'm dying. Oh. Kate, your mother present. Will, take me away, please. Kate, please you... My father won't let me marry you. He says I must marry a hunter or no one. Is this true, Frau Adam? I I'm afraid, Sir William. You see, we only hold the farm as tenants, and here Adam, his title of forest ranger, only so long as there is a hunter in the family to pass them on to, which means that Kate must be married to a forester. Tell me, love, would you prefer me as a hunter or a bailiff? Oh, I wouldn't care what you were, darling, as long as we could spend our lives together. <laughs> You can't suddenly turn yourself into a hunter within a few weeks, William. Don't be too sure of that, Frau Adam. Oh, what do you mean? I can't tell you now, but could you give me your word to keep the Herr Adam from betroving Kate to anyone for... three days? How can that help? There is a place I have to visit where I was born, and some... a question I must have answered before I can let you know. What? Whether or not you and I can be the ones to be betrothed and married. And with your father's consent. It took most of what money I had to pay my coach fare to Manfredstein. And it was long past dark when I was dropped off. The best I could afford at the inn was a bowl of soup. And by the time I set off for the graveyard... The heels end of the moon was all the light I had, skittering in and out of the clouds, driven over it by a scudding wind. It was still before midnight when I dug up my father's rifle where it had lain beside his grave, the oilskin still unrotted by the dam, the case still not pierced by the worms, and the gun itself in the fitful moonlight, still gleaming with the thick coat of oil I'd put on it myself. And now the worst part to cross the few steps to my mother's grave and stand there waiting for the midnight hour. The only time they say you can speak to a ghost. The church bell was sounding the magic hour as I knelt, thoughtlessly leaning the gun against the headstone. William, don't let that gun touch my headstone. Sorry, Mother. You have much to be sorry for. I know why you come. I had to, Mother. I love her. You want to break your sacred oath sworn on my deathbed. <laughs> if you do, you will have cause to regret it. But more so the bride who will never be yours. She will never be mine unless you release me from the oath. I If I wanted to, that's the last I can ever say to you. Mother, don't make me break my oath. Don't. Mother. She's gone. I had hoped against hope my mother could change, but I knew in my heart when I came that my mind was already made up one way or another. And the main thing that had brought me home was to find my father's gun. It took me two full days and a night to retrace my way along the road and the coach had brought me. And dusk was beginning to fall when, exhausted, famished and dirty from the road, I knocked on the door of the Adams' house. William! Oh, Will, darling, come in. Where have you been? Where... Oh, forgive me. No food, water, no sleep, huh? Bert, get some schnapps. Right away, Elsa. Mother, he's not... No, no, no he's just fainted. Get that big case out of the way, whatever it is. Oh, that's a gun case. That's good quality, too. I wonder... I wonder if you'd forget guns just long enough to get some schnapps into this poor boy. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I, I can get up. Yeah, now, get some of this into your belly first. It'll put some strength in your legs. Oh, I feel better now. Thank you. What happened to you, darling? 
Nothing happened to me. I did it all to myself. And for us, I can get up now. Uh, I'll help you up. Oh, thank you. I I just overdid a little. Uh, now, what have you been up to? I went to fetch my father's gun. My father was Forester General Will Brager of Manfredstein. So if it's a hunter you want for your son-in-law, it's a hunter you've got. Kate, will you come away from that window and help me get the meal ready for those men? They should be home soon. That's why I'm watching, Mama. Oh, and doing a little praying, too, I suppose. That Will shoots straight and true. He must be very out of practice. Oh, from the way he handled his gun this morning when they were getting ready to leave, I don't think it'll take him long to get his eye back. Oh, Mama, are you sure? Oh, who can be sure? The proof is in the pudding. Oh, which reminds me, the dough for my apple strudel, if I let that too long in the oven. Oh, Will, my darling, shoot true, straight and true as my love for you. A perfect shot! Ho ho! Dropped him in his tracks. He never even felt it. <laughs> Will, you studied well with your father. You stay with me, and before we are finished, we'll make you a second Kuno. Kuno? You. You don't know Kuno? Why, he was my father's grandfather and the first man who ever occupied this forest and cultivated this farm. <laughs> when his good fortune happened, he was a riding boy to a young gentleman of Whippach. And one day, attending him while he was riding hunt with the duke, the dogs turned up a stag on the back of which a man was bound. Oh, I've heard of that. The lords used to punish poor men who had poached by binding him like that so the herd would gore him to death or... He would eventually die of thirst or hunger. Right, right. Now, the Duke was a stern but uh, just man, and he had made a law against stag binding, and he wanted the man taken alive to find out who had broken his law. So he offered a reward to any huntsman who would bring down the stag without hurting the man. But if the man was shot and killed... He threatened the shooter with equal displeasure and his banishment from court. I'll wager none of the nobility were eager to take that Campbell, but Kuno did. Aye, lad. That very man whose picture you might have seen hanging above the mantelpiece of the house. Oh, I noticed him all right. He had an eye like a hawk. And nerves of steel. Well, just as the stag turned into a thicket, he clapped his gun to his shoulder and fired. At that same moment, out rushed the stag, staggered and fell, and the man... Unwounded, save for some scratches. And the reward was the farm and the title of far stranger. To Kuno himself and his heirs forever. Oh, what a magnificent reward for one shot. I so thought many people, especially those who had been afraid to take the risk. And so the gossip started. And since it was the nobility mainly who wished to save their faces... What did they do but persuade the Duke that Kuno's shot hit the mark through witchcraft and the black arts? But surely the Duke knew what a fine shot Kuno was. Well, it was the quickness of the thing, you see. Kuno could line up a target as fast as lightning. But the others argued that it was so fast he just fired at random. They said he never took aim, which makes it a devil shot. A devil shot never fails... Of hitting the mark. But the Duke didn't take away the farm. No, no. But from there came the regulation that every descendant of Kuno's must fire a probationary shot that drops the deer before he's admitted as tenant. If I may only know that Kate might be mine, I shall practice every moment to make sure I cannot miss. Good lad, good lad. After today, you have my confidence. Suddenly... The sun went out. The forest greenery changed to weird and ghostly shapes. And standing in front of me was the corpse gray shade of my mother, clad only in her winding sheet. I warned you, Will. I warned you. Only God can help you now.
with everything he wants in the world almost within his grasp, this spectral wraith of his mother seems to threaten Will with disaster. Or is she only a figment of the imagination, the prick of conscience in a young man's mind, already overtired and heady with excitement of the oath that circumstance is forcing him to break? I'll return shortly with Act Two. It was an exciting and wonderful dinner that night for the Adams and Will. In the warmth and regard of his future father-in-law, the unutterable delight of his bride-to-be, Will was almost able to forget that frail, grieving wraith who had faced him in the forest. But as day succeeded day, and the time of the trial drew nearer and nearer, the memory of his dead mother and her agony over his broken oath haunted him more and more. Will? Darling, what brings you home so early? You can see. Oh, not an empty bag again. What's the matter? What's happened? Kate, darling, I, I don't know. I'll have a deer in my sights and the gun will misfire. I'll, I'll come upon a partridge at point-blank range, and my shot will veer and hit a tree three feet to the left. I swear I think that gun is enchanted. You're just having a run of bad luck. It happens to every hunter, even father. Not like this. And the worst of it is he's blaming now on sheer heedlessness on my part. He, he thinks that all I think about is you. <laughs> well, at least some of the time you do, don't you? Oh, Kate, I, I have to struggle very hard to keep you out of my mind. I love you so. And I makes it even worse because I'm beginning to think my fear is affecting my shooting. What fear? I fear that your father will change his mind and that he'll withdraw his approval of our marriage. But he knows how well you shoot. You proved it to him that first day. Your hunting bag was bulging and you dropped that great stag whose antlers hang there beside my ancestor Kuno's portrait. That was one day out of two weeks. What you have done once you can do again for me. Here, Will. Here's your gun. It still lacks 15 minutes of three and the sun is still high. For me. For your Catherine. Bring me a heart. Take the dogs to be sure to round up one. And my heart and my prayers to bring you luck. By heaven, I will. Or not show myself again. Ah, there's a prize buck. Let me just get a bead on you, my beauty. Not 50 paces away. I can't miss. I, I couldn't have missed him. I, I couldn't. Oh, Kate, forgive me. I'll reload and, and still bring you your game. And be damned to whatever devil may try to lay his curse on me. Hey, hold fast, comrade. What ails a man to cry out so on a day such as this one? I turned in my tracks. And there, sitting under a nearby tree, was an old soldier with a wooden leg and a dusty, travel-worn uniform. Threadbare and barely holding together. Well, is it body or purse that's ailing? Health or wealth that escapes you? Or has someone put a spell on your gun? What did you say about my gun? Oh, uh, man and boy, I've spent my life with guns. And if I say it, it shouldn't, as no one knows more about them than I do. <laughs> I see you looking at my wooden leg. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I meant no harm. But... Oh, it happened so long ago, I never think of it. Cavalry sabers separated that from me. You, uh... You wouldn't have a bit of tobacco you could share with an old soldier? Why, why yes. Uh, just, just a minute. Here, let me hold your gun while you dig it out. That's as fine a piece as I have ever seen. No man could have missed that buck with this unless it had been charmed. Oh, I never thought on that. Here's your tobacco, sir. Oh, thank you. I'll just take a pipe load. And... Oh, keep it. Keep it. I have more at home. Charmed, you say? Then all I'd have to do would be to change my gun and... Oh, then... not so fast. If the spell has been properly laid, you'll have no better luck with any other gun. Oh, I 
can't believe that. If no gun I put to my shoulder will shoot true, how how then can I ever be a forester? Psst. Draw on here. I like you, lad, for your generosity, and I'll pose you a riddle, for which, if you have not the answer, I'll give it to you. What riddle? If the gun refuses to bring down the prey, what else lets the huntsman have his way? Oh, I'm... I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Why, the ball, lad, the bullet. But where could I find such a bullet? Why, it just so happens that I uh, have about me some gifted bullets that cannot fail to go through. Now, just give it a try now. No, 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 I'll answer for it, no doubt. Oh, I hate to waste a shot knowing I shall miss before I pull the trigger. Well, the dogs have lost the deer. Where shall I find a target? I'll pick one for you. Hey, look up. You see yon kite up there? Bring him down. Oh, well, not only is he almost out of range, but he's but a speck. I can scarce see him. Still take him and fire, never doubt. <laughs> well, what have I got to lose? That's the spirit I like. Fire away! I hit him. <laughs> Is no surprise. But where would one find bullets like these? Oh, it is not difficult to cast them. Hey, here's a few braces of my bullets for you in exchange for the tobacco. Try another. I don't know how to thank you. Hey, lad. You'll find your own way. See that hair? Drop him. I hit him. I hit him. Old soldier, how can I... Oh. I turned to thank my benefactor again, but he had slipped away into the forest as silently as he had come. One mistake I made. I shrank from telling anyone, not even my beloved Kate, of the gifted bullets. <laughs> oh, Ilsa, now, so much for your nonsense about enchantments on Will's gun. <laughs> enchantments? Mama was afraid that someone had cast a spell over you or your gun. Oh, women and their superstitions. Well, men are just as bad, if not worse. <laughs> not foolish enough to imagine some devil knocked down old Kuno's portrait when anyone knows it was a cankered nail. What's that about a devil? Oh, nothing but nonsense. This afternoon, just shortly after you went back to the forest, the picture fell off the wall. How long after I left the house? Not over 15 minutes. Just as the clock was striking three. You see how foolish the whole thing is? Three. <laughs> the luckiest hour of the day. Lucky for me, at least, I thought. Remembering that it was just about the time I met the old soldier. I was tempted to speak about him, but my pride held me back. For within a few days, I was the talk of all the foresters again. No one brought more game home than I. But my stock of the enchanted bullets was running desperately low, and I prayed to find old wooden lug. And to my horror, I was down to a single bullet which I had to hoard for the competition. And suddenly every shot began again to go astray. And then the final blow struck. Well, well, where are you? I'm, I'm here, here, Adam. Hey, watch this. Why are you not ready to go hunting? I. Well, I, I, I don't feel very well. I couldn't care less if you were about to take to your deathbed. You know the Duke has sent an emissary ordering nearly double the amount of venison necessary for the festival? It'll take every huntsman within the next ten miles to bring in enough to satisfy his honor. Well, what good am I to you? I'll, I'll only waste the bullets. You know I've lost my eye. You have lost more than your shooting eye if you don't bring in your fair share of the game today. Now... You'll have lost my daughter. But you promised me I that... I promised a forester. Not some mealy-mouthed quill pusher who can only see to shoot on certain days. Now, make haste while I bring the dogs around. Oh, Will, I overheard. What are you going to do? Kate, I... I don't know. I... Uh, hand me my bag. Here, darling. Surely, for my sake, somehow you can down a buck today? Hand me my gun. Kate, as I promise you, I'll 
I'll bring at least one home if I have to club him to death with a gun stock. I threaded my way through the trees in despair. Kate, I had resolved, to me was lost. Which way to lose her? To use my magic bullet now and escape her father's displeasure only to fail the competition shot? Or to hang on to the bullet for the Duke's competition? All of a sudden, a ridge away through the trees, I saw a herd of deer coming. Automatically, I loaded the last precious bullet in the breech, aimed my gun, but still my finger refused to squeeze off a shot. To... Fire away, boy! Fire! You'll never have a better chance! I promise you, you'll hit not one but two. Coming down the hill towards me, waving encouragement, old wooden leg. And secure now that I could get at least one more charm bullet, I turned and fired. He was right. I had dropped not one but two Robux with one shot. I turned to hurry and meet him and greet him, but... There was no sign of him. He was gone as if the earth had literally opened up and swallowed him. And all my hopes with him. What a shot, Kate. You should have seen your husband to be. You would have been proud of him. Two bucks at one shot. One might almost think it was a magic bullet. Oh. <laughs> Women and their superstitions. Is that what happened, Will, hey? <laughs> Did you make yourself a magic bullet? Like the scandalous charge they tried to make about old Kuno two centuries ago? I beg your pardon here. Adam, what did you say? Will isn't feeling himself today. Sometimes I wonder about the stories of old Kuno and the devil shot. Kuno's was no devil shot. Are you saying there is no such thing? Oh, there's always gossip of such a thing. You say that's how Peter Franz died. They found him on the road all torn and clawed to pieces. By whom? Uh, the one thing he never could say in his confession to the magistrate. What did he say to the magistrate? Why, that he and some old wooden-legged soldier had been trying to make some magic bullets. Did, did he say how such a bullet could be made? Oh, it is all a pack of nonsense, of course, but for the sake of a good tale to give us all the goosebumps, you must go to a crossroads, make a circle with a bloody sword... And in this circle lay a skull and bones crosswise. On the stroke of eleven, you start to cast the balls. Sixty and three. No more, no less. Nor must you step from out that charm circle, no matter what apparitions appear or shrieks rend the air or owls or bats or other hideous things might beat against you. Until the last stroke of twelve. And of the bullets cast, sixty will carry true, and only three can miss. <laughs> Peter was so scared at uh, whatever happened to him inside that circle that long before twelve he fled from it. And little more could he tell before he died in horrible agony. Oh. Oh, God preserve all God-fearing folk from such snares of Satan. You frightened the heart out of me. And look at Will. He's pale as a sheet. The poor darling hasn't been feeling well all day. You should never have forced him to the hunt, Papa. Uh, true enough. He said he was out of sorts. Well, God grant he be the same way when the provisional shot comes up day after tomorrow. So he may shoot as he shot today. But Will Brager, knowing now the secret of the bullet that could not miss, would sleep little that night. Knowing what preparations he had in mind for the morrow and what he planned to do, he knew that this night might well be his last above ground. I'll return shortly with Act Three. That same night, once all the rest were asleep, Will stole from the house. Then, having borrowed a spade and a sack, he stole away to the nearest graveyard. Well before dawn, he returned with a skull, two thigh bones, and a sword. 
the bones still caked with earth and the sword rusted in the scabbard from their sojourn in some unnamed soldier's grave. After cleaning them off carefully, he stole back into the house, hiding them under his bed. It was nearly dawn before he fell into a deep sleep, just before the rest of the house awakened. Well, I'm off. I'll pick off a couple of bags of Cornish hen to garnish the table for the Duke. Oh, uh, Will still asleep? You gave him the day off. Quite right, too. The boy should be well rested for his ordeal tomorrow. I'll see you later, sir. Uh, Kate, you uh, look a little peaked. Anything wrong? No. No, Papa. <laughs> Is it the closeness of marriage that gives you the trembles? Oh, now off with you. Tis Will that concerns her, Bert. Oh, have no fear for Will. He will not miss. His bullet will find his mark. Well, I won't like companionship. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. You know, you do look pale and wan, love. Why not rest a little? No. No, there's too much to do. Will has been so strange since last night, too. You... You haven't quarreled. No, nothing like that. It's silly, really, Mama. Just a dream I had last night. Dreams have no meaning, do they? Tell me about it. Well, it, it isn't really much to tell. I... I dreamed I... I was a white dove. Oh, a happy omen for a bride, surely. Except that... that I wasn't flying free. There was a ring around my neck. It was holding me. I wanted to fly away, but couldn't. And then... Then? Then... there was a loud noise. And I fell. I fell down beside you, and you were kneeling beside me, and Will was turning to look at us in agony. And I saw that you were all covered with blood. Me? My blood, Mother. My blood. It was too late. The die was cast. Tonight... I would try to forge the magic bullets. So, a little wine for all of us. For this night, we will keep the bridal feast. Tomorrow, it would be impossible with the Duke and his retinue here. This is our last chance as a family, before the wedding, to dine confidentially and affectionately. Prose it. Prose it. All the best of luck. Frosty. Frosty. And all the best of luck. <laughs> but it is tomorrow. The young people will be happiest. Uh, the Duke has insisted the vicar be there. And the moment Will has passed his examination... <coughs> Kuno's picture has fallen again. What the devil can be the matter with that nail? Kate, there's blood on your face. It's nothing. The corner just grazed my temple as it fell. <laughs> Let me see. No, no, it's already wiped away. Please, let's begin the wedding feast. We've waited too long already. Instead of a feast, the evening was a nightmare for me. By eight o'clock, I was getting desperate. How could a man steal away from his own bridal festival? Then with the last strike here, Adam broke it up, and we all, after exchanging kisses and handshakes and hugs of affection, went to bed. It was a long, long wait for me until at last nine o'clock struck and gathering the lead bullet mold, coals and all the other requisites into my sack, I stole quietly downstairs and out of the house. I was less than 200 yards from the house when I heard the rapid patter of feet catching up with me. Will, Will, where are you? the house. But where are you going? Somewhere you cannot follow me. <gasps> You're running away. Running away from you? What What would make you think that? That bag over your shoulder. Don't you want to marry me? Want to? Oh, God, Kate, if I can't be married to you, then I don't want to live. That's how I feel about you. Then go, go quickly back to bed and leave me to do what must be done. 
If I let you go now, I may never see you again. I'm going so we can be together for the rest of our lives. We're starting that this minute. I'm going with you. You can't. You don't understand this. Terrible danger. If you can face it, so will I. How can I explain it to you? There isn't time. You can explain to me on the way to wherever we're going. I will not allow you to come. Now, you listen to me. I want to spend my life with you. But in the light of the moon, I can see the shadow of possible death in your eye. If it's death you're to find tonight, then I choose to find that with you. Whatever our future is, it lies together. Now, shall we get started? And you can explain to me what it's all about as we go. It was a long walk to the crossroads, but even at that I was still finishing my story to her. Kathy struck dumb by the time I had drawn my circle with the bloody sword, spread the bones, and started my cohort. Ten o'clock had struck on the church steep long ago, and it was hard by eleven. All was in readiness as the moon buried itself deeper and deeper in the clouds. There was a faint pattering of rain that hissed on my ladle where the lead melted in the heat. And all about were the sounds of bats and howls and other horrible light shunning things that came and went as Kate clung to me in dismay. Oh, Will, I should never have been the cause of your breaking your oath to your mother. My mother would forgive me, I know. Kate, there's still time for you to go. It's already too late. The hour is striking. Yes. Now remember, Kathy, no matter what you hear, no matter what you see or feel, don't step out of the circle till we're done. Remember. I remember. A prayer. Oh, God, if Will has offended you, he did it only for love. And for what he is about to do, forgive him. For if he were not to have me, or me, him, I would be ready to take my own life. Too late, too late, for with that last chime, the first bullet is made and you are mine, mine. Don't listen to him, Kate. Put more lead into the ladle. Oh, no! Use the bellows on the fire. The light will drive them away. See? See, they are gone. Shut your ears, shut your eyes, Kate. Stay in the circle. Look, that horrible old man with the wooden leg. There's nothing can help. The hour's too late. Nothing can step twixt thee and thy fate. Will! A coach and six headed straight for us down the road. They'll ride over us. Run! Run! Oh, Kate! You stay in my arms and we stay on ground. Outside the circle is only death. No use describing the rest of that hellish hour. The coach, reaching the circle, soared into the air to vanish. As did a ravening, slathering, huge, hairy boar that charged down at us from the crossroad. And all the while I molded the bullets while Kate kept the lead liquid for me. By my watch, it was almost twelve. And as the sixtieth bullet was cast, the clock began to strike. And the moon came out full as I hastily cast the last three. As I did... All was sudden silence, as there, standing beyond the circle, was old wooden leg. The witching hour, and the task is finished. You've stood the trial well. What would you have of me? Nothing. Nothing at all. What I want, I have prepared myself. Have you now? But with my help. By no means I bargained for no help. I did not summon you. <laughs> I covered your bolder than most. So take the bullet you cast, but remember, sixty for thee, three for me. The sixty go true, but three askew. All will be plain when we meet again. <laughs> In a puff of black smoke, he was gone, vanished into thin moonlight air. And I took my bullets and my fainting bride home, torn by black despair and brightening hope. By next morning at dawn, the Duke and his party had arrived for the hunt. 
And I was chosen to ride by his side as his gunsman and hunter. If I had any fear of my magic bullets, the first shot dispelled it forever. Where the hell, damn my hide, that is shooting. The lead duck in that flight which is not yet over us, huh? <laughs> Partly from relief, but mainly I am ashamed because of the Duke's flattery. I lost my head. By the time I returned from the hunt, I had but three bullets left. Of the other 62 misses only, all the rest had found their mark. Well, by gad, Adam, I've never seen such shooting in my life as this young fellow here. Oh, oh, hey. William is the name, right? Yes, Your Honor. And I swear after today's exhibition, it seems foolhardy to carry through the old tradition, eh? Still, tis the law, and we must allow him to show off for his lovely bride. Come, come, my dear, bring your mother and stand near me. Thank you, Your Honor. And you stand on my other side, Will. Come, come, load up whilst I pick your target. With shaking hands, I fingered the three bullets left. Which to the good? And which the one that could miss? I had to gamble. Then, just as I loaded... The white dove on that pillar far down the road. Bring her down. Oh, no, no! No, no, hush, girl, hush. What? Don't you want this likely lad for your husband, eh? <laughs> now, fire away, Will. Ah! The dream! What on earth Faint. is the matter with the girl? Fainted? Oh, blessed man. Yeah, I'm a... No. Sixty go true. Three go askew. I turned to see Kate's mother bent over her, soaked with the blood that ran down her bridal veil from the fatal wound in the head. I had picked the devil's bullet, but I knew the one that I loaded for myself would go true, and I would join my bride wherever she was. A true gothic tale. Terror, suspense, blood, death, and tragedy. Not the stuff one would think to sleep on, and yet more gothic stories are read in bed than in the parlor or library. Perhaps because it is only human nature to be able to say, as we turn out the light, such things, of course, could never happen to us. I'll return shortly. Don't think too hard on William, who broke a sacred oath, or Kate, who loved well, but not wisely. It was Daniel Defoe, Robinson Crusoe's writer, who said it. Wherever God erects a house of prayer, the devil builds a chapel there, and twill be found upon examination the latter has the largest congregation. Let's hope none of us join it. Our cast included Michael Wager, Suzanne Grossman, Ian Martin, Bryna Rayburn, and William Johnstone. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>